Unexpected setbacks happen to everyone. And here's how you can develop phenomenal coping skills and stop yourself spiraling. See, a lot of us think that people who are very successful never have setbacks, never have knockbacks. Things don't go wrong. They lead a charmed life. That's not true. Success is not about never failing. It's not about never having setbacks. It's about how quickly you bounce back, how quickly you get back up. And I have found that the fastest way to stop spiraling and to get back up is to tell yourself that you have phenomenal coping skills. Many years ago, I worked with a girl who really had a challenging life. In fact, her mother's saying was this, I can't cope. They never went to the cinema or even the store. The mother couldn't cope with light or sound. She was light sensitive, noise sensitive. If you opened a packet of potato chips, it would make her react. Because the mother's words were, I can't cope, can't cope with the noise, can't cope with the mess, can't cope with anything. My client grew up with the belief, I can't cope. And she had such an inability to cope that she ended up being hospitalized. And then she was a day patient. And then I began to treat her. And she said, you know, every week I have to go for therapy. And we sit in a circle and we have to say something good. And when it's my turn, I tend to go, well, today I saw some daffodils. It made me smile. Or yesterday I saw some bees and I felt good. And I'm like, no, forget the bees and the daffodils. This is what you are going to say when it's your turn in the group to speak. You are going to say, I have phenomenal coping skills. And next week you're going to say, I have extraordinary coping skills. And next week you're going to say, I have amazing coping skills. You're going to say it in that group. You're going to write it on your mirror. You're going to say it every day. It's going to become not just your affirmation, but your statement of truth. I promise you, if you say it, you send a message to your mind, and by the way, your mind does not care if what you're telling it is good or bad, right or wrong, useful or useless, helpful or not helpful, or doesn't care. You know why? It doesn't even know. So you can choose whether to go, I can't cope, or you can choose to go, I have amazing coping skills. I can't cope. I have awesome coping skills you get to choose. You know what you can't choose? What you do to your body. You know, I can't cope. This is driving me crazy. I'm at the end of my rope, I'm at my maximum bandwidth. I just can't cope. I can't cope because it's not true. Human beings are actually resilient. And the fastest way to stop yourself spiraling out of control, the fastest way to stop believing that events is all gone wrong, my flight got cancelled, my contract got cancelled, my partner left me, my child got sick, I can't pay my bills, I'm losing it, I'm sinking, I'm drowning in debt, I'm sinking into grief, I can't deal anymore. The fastest way to stop that is to have some amazing sentences. I have extraordinary, phenomenal, incredible, enviable, exemplary coping skills sends an incredible message to your mind that doesn't think, doesn't argue, doesn't disagree, just goes, hey, whatever you say, your mind is the genie. Your wish is its command. When you say, I have amazing coping skills, your words shape your reality and it becomes real because it's not the events that affect you. It's the meaning you attach to the event. It's not pressure. It's not people. It's your beliefs. So going back to my client, let me call her Annabelle. That wasn't her name, but we'll pretend it was. Annabelle came back and said, you know, it's amazing. I say that all the time. I even sing that song from in the Muppets, phenomenal, da 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 da, phenomenal, da 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 da. I sing, I'm phenomenal. And it's just so in my head. I sing it, say it, speak it, think it. And I feel amazing. But you know what else has happened? The nurse said to me, Annabelle, the other patients also would like to say, 
they have phenomenal coping skills. Is that okay? She went, well, it's not my word. Marissa told me to say it. It's a word I use all the time, by the way. So she said, sure. So they all began to say it in turn, different versions of it. And then the ward put up posters all around. You have amazing coping skills. You are a phenomenal coper. And they said that that ward, that group, if you like, had the fastest discharge and the fastest recovery. So I invite you to do the same. Be a coper. Tell yourself, I can cope with whatever life throws at me. Whatever's in my path, I cope with it because I'm a coper. Not only am I a coper, I'm a phenomenal coper, an extraordinary coper. I have phenomenal coping skills. You see, if your belief is I'm going to be perfect, I'm going to find a perfect person, have a perfect home, raise perfect kids and have a perfect job, you know what you'll be? Disappointed. Perfection doesn't exist. In 33s, I can tell you that my clients who keep trying to be perfect, not only the unhappiest and the most dissatisfied, they are also the loneliest because we don't want someone who's perfect. We want someone who is real. We want someone who can cope because that's a great thing. Oh, I can cope and you can cope and let's cope with life together. Let's take the good and the bad and let's just have a great life with our great coping skills. So let's imagine that you use the word, I can't cope, I'm in overwhelm. That's a new word. I'm in overwhelm, I'm overwhelmed. If you tell your mind that you can't cope, then you need something to help you cope. That may be drugs, it may be medication, it may be alcohol, it may be food. Because you've told yourself, I can't cope, and because your mind takes everything you say as literal, it's now going to look outside of you for something that makes you cope. I was working with a girl recently who had a very bad drug problem and I told her something. I said, you know what? Drugs are for people who can't cope with reality. Reality is for people who can't cope with drugs. And she laughed and said, I never thought about that. Drugs are for people who can't cope with realities. If I cope with reality, that means I don't need drugs, of course. Well, when we're in grief, we go, I need medication, I need something to take away the pain, I need a pill, I need a drink. You see, it's a belief, it's an action. I need something out there, medication, drugs, drinks, cigarettes, cakes. I need something out there because I've just told myself I can't cope in here. In fact, when you can cope in here, you don't need anything out there. And you can cope with grief, as painful as it is. You can cope with loss. You can cope with setbacks. Because when you medicate, when you push them down with a massive tub of ice cream or with some drugs or with some alcohol, when you push them down, they don't go away. They regroup and they come back stronger than ever. All of my clients and antidepressants say... You know, it doesn't work. One of my clients came to me and said, I can't have sex with my husband. So I went to my doctor. He put me on Prozac. You know what's happening now? I still can't have sex, but I don't care. I'm just so numb. I don't care. Something was driving me crazy. Now I'm on medication and I'm just numb. I'm not up. I'm not down. I'm numb. You don't really want to be comfortably numb. You want to feel and joy and pain are like the weave of a cloth. You can't have one without the other. We can have moments of immense joy, but there's also pain. Our parents will probably get old and die. We will get old and die. Things happen. But when you believe I can cope with anything life puts in front of me, then you can indeed cope. I lost both my parents and one of my dearest friends all in the same three-month period. That was hard. But I was just so glad I had my parents for such a long time. I was so glad I got to be with them at the end and talk to them and say goodbye. And my father was saying, Joe, I've had a wonderful life. I've had such a great life. It's been an amazing life. He was a coper. My mother had a very different passing. And I felt no pain when my father died. Apart from I missed him, I felt a lot of pain about my mother 
because my mother wasn't a coper. My father was. My father decided he'd had an amazing life, and my mother didn't quite think the same thing. Be a coper. You get to choose. Remember, you can choose to be a coper. You can choose to believe you're not a coper, but you can't choose what believing you are not a coper does to your body, to your adrenals, to your cortisol levels. When you believe you are a coper, everything is easier. So be a coper all the time. So if you would like to rewire your mind to be a phenomenal coper, and why wouldn't you? If you want to upgrade your own internal software to have phenomenal coping skills, click the link below and take this audio on installing the cheerleader.